introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold, he weighed it officially 137 pounds. This veteran brings a record that stands at 28 victories, 12 defeats, 4 draws with 18 wins coming by way of knockout desde Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, presentando Luis El Vampiro. And across the ring, his opponent stands, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white, trimmed in black and red, he weighed in 138 and one half pounds. A veteran of 29 professional bouts, his record stands at 27 victories. Just one defeat, one draw with 15 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Cebu, Philippines, here is Mercito No Mercy. Give your instructions in the dressing room. You see if you do the in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Protejese en todo tiempo, okay? Belt line's good. Aquí está bien. Okay? Choco antes, suerte. time here in San Francisco. Cito Hesta in those white trunks. Arce on the black trunks, the gold trim. Hesta coming out as a right-handed fighter. Even though he's a southpaw. I mean, he's almost he's a natural, right -hander. natural right-hander, mm -hmm. but he's always fought out of the southpaw stance, and tonight he's coming out and right after Arce as he goes right after him. He's coming out right-handed tonight, and he stays in the right-handed stance. Interesting start by Mercedo Hesta, something we didn't expect, and I'm sure certainly Luis Arceo did not, did not expect. Yeah, he started, he switched, said his father made him switch at the age of 10. Started fighting southpaw. Here's another left hook to the body, Arceo by Hesta. And he actually looks comfortable. You know, one one way you find figure out if a fighter is comfortable in that stance is not so much the punches he throws, because... Fighters can throw punches out of both stances. It's the defense and his defensive awareness and sharpness out of the new stance. And, you know, you can see Hesta's pretty alert, almost as if he's been training out of his right-handed stance. And he didn't just come up with the idea on the fly, you know? You know Hesta's got a new trainer. It's his father. Yeah. He says they've been training now for the past couple of fights. So maybe... Uh, worked just... on his head movement, worked on his footwork. Yeah, and, and maybe if... Uh... His father turned him southpaw as a, as a kid, maybe uh, turned him back to right-handed yeah. as an adult. <laughs> you know, Hess is 27-1-1. One one. If you think he's tough, his father, champion Muay Thai fighter, MMA fighter. Oh, as these two exchange a couple of punches there at the center of the ring. Yeah, Macedo, very shifty here in the first round, and this is something that he told us he worked on with his father, and his father told us they'd worked on it, you know? Moving of the legs, moving of, movement of the head. As you see, has to go back to the lefty and then go back to right-handed again. Just a minute left here in round one. Busy round here for both fighters. As his father is in his 50s, he just stopped competing Four years ago. Yeah, that's a tough man. Yeah, that's a guy that wants to fight. It really got took there by Isaiah. But he has to have to be careful with this. When he switches stances, not to do it from too close a range. You don't want to get caught with a punch while you're switching stances. You know, anytime you switch your stances, you want to do it back on the outside where you're in the safety zone before you come back in and attack. 20 seconds here left at these guys again. Exchange leather in the center of the ring. Final seconds of round one. Hesta caps it off with a left to the body. Welcome back. Main event here. 
Yes. Luis Arceo there taking on Mercedo Hesta. Very active round one for both guys. Arceo is 35. Been fighting for 14 years. Tonight's CompuBox stats, they're brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. See, Hesta landed the better percentage of punches, but Arceo, certainly the busier fighter, throwing a lot. Some blood trickling down on the top of the nose of Arceo. Some, I, don't, I don't know where the cut is at exactly. It might be on the bridge of the nose. Let's see when he turns back around if we can get a better look at it. Our sales five and one in his last six fights. Well, he's been in the ring, Josecito Lopez. Anthony Peterson. Jose Armando. Santa Cruz, yep. Yeah. And there's Hesta back in the southpaw stance now this round. Where we're more accustomed to seeing him. But he thinks his experience, he says, listen, I've been in the ring with some good ones. I don't think this young guy can show me anything that I haven't seen. And he comes right after Hesta and Hesta. Gives him a one-two right off the ropes. Hesta's losing one of his sponsors on the, on the back of his trunks. Oh, you got to keep that. No, you got to keep that. <laughs> you got to keep the sponsors happy now. <laughs> There's a left hand by Hesta. I see it. <laughs> Right upper undercut there, short upper, right uppercut there by Hester. Oh, nice move there by Hester. Trey left hand stepped around on our sail. Now we see that footwork that his father's been talking to us about. Minute left here, under a minute left in this round. Good round for Hester thus far. Steps around again and connects with a right hook. Here comes Hesta. He's got him against the ropes. On the attack. Marcelo holds on. Not sure if it was because he was hurt as he was trying to break up the momentum of Marcelo Hesta. Oh, another left hand. Good left hand to the stomach. Final seconds of round two, another left hand, Arceo's hurt! Action from the last round, a very big round by Marcito Hesta. You see the left hand land against Arceo, and then he pushes that momentum of driving him to the ropes. And there's the end of the round with a nice straight left hand, and then a little push to kind of create that space once again with that forward momentum. This is round three. They're cutting it. Developed there basically on the bridge of the nose of Arceo. Here comes Arceo now. A combination, but it's Festa. Finishes it off with a right hook. Festa's lone defeat came in December of 2012. He lost a 12-round decision to Miguel Vasquez. Yeah, for the lightweight title, for the IBF lightweight mm -hmm. title. He told us it's not so much Vasquez as he wants, he just wants a, a shot at a world title. Doesn't matter which one. Including Vasquez, obviously. Vasquez still has that IBF lightweight title. After that loss, Esther took about 16 months off. Suffered a rib injury. Sparring training. From his father. <laughs> he said yeah. he's sparring his father. His father gave him an elbow. He thought they were MMA Muay Thai fight. <laughs> oh, nice right hook by Hester. Yeah, the father, very intense guy. There's another left hand by Hester. Oh, a right hand that stunned Arceo. But Arceo Key continues to come forward. Arceo trying to keep Hester on the back foot, but Hester, oh, good body shot. Oh, a good left hand to the body of Arceo. Hester doing a good job of walking him into traps and counter punches. Sale talked a lot about 
his experience. He didn't think there would be anything that Pesta could bring that he hadn't seen. I think he's Pesta showed him a few tricks. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of times that's the thing with guys like Arce. They're, they're veterans and they have experience against the top opposition. Oh, good combination by Hesta on that counter as well. But the problem is you get that much experience and you're getting beat up on that. You know, a lot of times you're shot worn or a little bit past it. And like we said, it seems like Arce at 35 years of age, but also having been in so many in with so many quality good fighters, you know, they, they may have punched them out of it. Hesta doing the same now. It's blood on the face of Luis Arce. And the combinations are coming in bunches. It was a three-punch combination. Hester just finished it up with a two-punch combination, and you can see the blood there from the nose, on the bridge of the nose of Arceo. Another little short right hook by Hester. Final seconds here of the round. We come back. It's round four. He told me at one point he was ready to call it quits on boxing and she's the one that told him give up when your body is ready not when you doubt your talent he said she is his biggest fan his motivation and she is the reason why he does what he does thanks thanks jess yeah it's hard to believe his wife first time she's watching him fight here in the states he said after that Josecito lopez loss he thought he was gonna give up fighting he said that was it she told him look are you done if you're not get in there and fight it's not for lack of effort. He just keeps trying to press the action and, and move in on Hester. This Hester joins a good left hook there on Hester, but it's Hester who's setting him up for a lot of those counters. Yeah, trips over himself there, Arceo. Arceo started this round off fast. There's another little short left hook. This one's scheduled for 10. Festa now makes his home here in San Diego, California. Good counter right hook there by Hesta. We hit the halfway point of this round. Keep in mind, Hesta fights out of the South Coast. Oh, good. Minute left in the fourth round. Short little right hook by Hester. He tries to counter Arceo. He stunned Arceo a couple times in this fight, but he continues to press the action and come forward. Yeah, I think stun maybe is a hard word to use. Maybe got his attention. Arceo is. I've been knowing that a good chance, and you know, he comes to fight all the time, and he's coming to fight tonight. He just seems outgunned, and uh, the better weapons for Hesta, although good move right hand there by Arceo. Final seconds of round four. There's a little right hand. Left hand by Hesta. And you know some action from that last round. You see Hester with a little counter right hand, end of the round, and then a little, little short right up. Okay, keep in mind, Hester is a natural right hander, so he's very educated with the right hand despite the southpaw stance. And you saw how he mixed it in there with a, with a little check right hook and then a short right up. Leading right hook there by Hester. It's interesting, Arceo talked a lot, and again, feet get tangled up, and as you pointed out, that's what happens when you're fighting a southpaw. He talks about his experience. When does experience come into a play in a fight like this? A lot of times, again, it's hard to classify experience from, differentiate experience from just uh, being shop-worn. You know, it seems Arceo's more on the shop-worn side than he is experienced. 
that's some good shots here being landed by Hester. But, you know, because it's not like Hester is a, is a rookie in his own right. You know, he's, this is a guy who's been in for the World Lightweight title. He, you know, he didn't win it. But nonetheless, he's been in uh, at a pretty high level himself. So the experience of Arceo, I'm not sure, matters in this case because the experience it might be the reason Arceo is shot born to begin with. Back to Hester's last three wins, by the way, have come by knockout. Oh, there's another left hand. And when the counter is he timed our sale will come in. And Hessa doing some quality things in this fight, you know, showing some good counters, some good offense initiation, sharp on the counters, changing the angles very nice, a so good left hand to the stomach there. Right uppercut. And punch it from different angles. Certainly seen a different fighter. From the last time he was Vasquez, when he lost that fight, yeah, to the fighter you see there, he said he worked a lot on the footwork and his head movement. Yeah, yeah, and he just looks, just a, a his body language is just a bit more, um, more spunk to it. You know what I mean? He's just he's against Vasquez, he looked really flat that night. You know, and and then tonight, you know, you're seeing a guy who not only is looking here to fight, but is also, you know. I see Arceo pushing the action. Again, you can't discount the heart of Arceo. Yeah. Again, you see Hester obliging, and you know when he's not punching, he's moving his head. He's changing the angles. Oh, there's a right uppercut there. And the nice right uppercut there. His head got it. And he's very creative with the angles he's punching at. And these are all things that you know we like to see from Hester because he's got the ability to do them. It's just a matter of you know going in the gym and working on them, and then uh, putting it together in the fight. As you see the cut now on Arceo's yeah, face. Blood really starting to stream down the face of Arceo. Still coming forward, throwing punches, and eating some. As Hester works off the ropes. You can just tell Hester's just a stronger guy. Yeah, yeah, and he's calm, you know, nonetheless. Our sales coming forward, but Hester remaining calm and, and timing it on the way in. Continues to hit him with those two pieces. You see the action from that last round. You see Hester, again, with a sharp com counter punching combination off the initiation of Arceo. But you see Arceo also did some pretty good work. And, you know, for, not for lack of effort here is Arceo losing this fight. Is he trying to push the action in a lot of spots. Maybe it's a little sloppy. He's not as short and, and, and concise as fence. But in spots, Arceo shows that little bit of uh, spunkiness as well and uh, pushes the action. As we have come to the halfway point, Doctor wants to take a look at our sale. Dr. Gary Furness says he's okay. <laughs> Halfway point here of our main event. You know, I thought it was interesting, Paulie, as Arceo continues to press the action. He said that was his game plan because he saw on tape that Hester didn't know what to do when you pressured him. He seems like he knows what to do tonight. He's, yeah, yeah. He's countered him. He, he's looking really good. And, and setting up Arceo with his own pressure. You know, a lot of times he takes that half step back to shoot the counter. So he'll set that trap by leaving the space, going straight back. And then meeting Arceo with a punch like, like that. that. You know, and, and so, so despite pushing Hester back, it's not really affected Hester in a negative way. It's, it's Hester shown to be a quality boxer and knows how to set traps on his way back. And Hester is really finding the target, especially the head of Arceo. Uppercuts, and then he slide steps out. Again, very educated right hand, a little short uppercut and right hook. There by Hester as he doubled up on the right hand. Blood again trickling from the face of Arceo, swelling. Good right hand by Arceo. Take Arceo and just check regardless, you know. Tough guy. There's a right hand. That one snaps the head of Hester. Oh, we got a fight now. And Hester's got to be careful. At times, he's got a bad habit of pulling straight back a little bit recklessly. You know, I understand sometimes he'll take that half step back to, to set the trap and counter, but sometimes he'll just pull straight back a little bit on the lazy side. And he's gotten caught a couple times with punches while he pulls back a little bit lazily. There's another uppercut, double uppercut by Hester. Now that may counter as, as uh, Arceo threw that jab. A left uppercut. 
and has up in the southpaw stance through that right uppercut. And then came back to the left one later in the combination. I like the way Hessler counters. At times I think that half step back. Sometimes he'll just hold his ground. Like right now he's holding his ground. He steps out with a right hook. Yeah, he steps out as he punches, but sometimes Hester will counter right from where he's at. And, he, and he, I know a planted counter has a lot more power. Lead left hand by Hester. So he, he mixes that up very well. Sometimes taking that half step back and sometimes meeting on sale with punches directly right there. Seconds, round six. It's our main event. It's a two-punch combination by Hester. Marcelo's face is a bloody mess now. He seems like he's cut over the right eye as well. Still trying though. Got yeah. credit. Yeah. Unfortunately, just a little snap. It seems like on these punches. And that's a sign of a shop worn fighter. There's a right hand by Hester to cap the round off. Back, we are in the main event here. Cito Hesta taking on Luis Arceo. Of course, beginning of last round, they had the doctor check on Arceo. Once again, they were checking on him in between the rounds. They wanted to check on his breathing. The ref even said he thought he had taken a number of excessive head blows. Yeah, yeah, and the accumulation sometimes can be bad as well. But Hesta certainly accumulated a lot of punishment off the head of uh, Luis Arceo. Number of big shots. Well, Hester. That's so smart. He's shifty when he needs to be, and he holds his ground when at other times, you know? Really class performance by Mercedo Hester. There's a short right hook. Hester said he needed a dominant performance tonight over a quality fighter like Arceo. Here's another. Three punch combination. He wants to fight again for that lightweight title. Yeah, and Hester, when he has, shows the enthusiasm he's showing tonight in his style, you know, where I mean, he has that, he has, has a spunky leg movement and then that creative combination. You see a slip there yeah. by our sale. You know, he makes him much tougher to deal with. Against Miguel Vasquez in the fight where he lost the lightweight title, he looked like. Well, like he almost didn't want to be there. He was very, very sluggish, like he was feet weren't quicksand. And here, you know, a lot more enthusiasm in his style tonight. You know, it's not just about the quality of the, of the, and the ability of Hester. It's also the mental, the mindset. And, and he, he's just an enthusiastic fighter here tonight. And he's very creative. You can see he's thinking in there and having fun. And, and that's when he becomes dangerous. And I'll tell you, Vasquez is one of those fighters, too, that makes a lot of people look bad. Just about his style of fighting. Yeah, he's a very awkward guy. Here we go, minute left here in round seven. Oh, good left hand. That one backs up our sale. And right hand by our sale. And has to connect with one of his own. You give Arceo credit, he is still throwing punches. And no quit the punches. Yep. No quit in the guy. Now Arceo picking up the action here. There's a left hand by Hesta. Another straight left. Checked on him and he said the reason was too many excessive headshots. Yeah, yeah. You know, Arceo's had a long career, fought a lot of good fighters. You know, you want to be air on the caution of say on the side of safety with a guy like Arceo. 
but was never going to quit on his own. You hear the crowd appreciate the effort by our sale. You love that. I mean, they respect the guy. Took a lot of punishment, but he kept coming forward, kept yeah. trying to push the action. Yeah, yeah, and that's all he can do. You know, he, was, he didn't come here to uh, be the favorite in the fight, but he came here and did his best. Obviously, he tried to win the whole time. He never stopped trying. Sometimes guys like that have to be saved from, himself, from themselves. Atesta was clearly the better fighter and was landing some very clean head blows. Let's go to our third member of the broadcast team. Here's Jessica Rosales. Jess? I just talked to the doctor right now. He told me that he called the fight because he had too many head blows. He just wasn't alert when he saw him right now in the corner. I tried to talk to him a little bit more about it, and he was actually just focused in on him right now in our sale, making sure that he's, you know, comprehending what's going on. He's still keeping his eye on him, so I think he's a little bit concerned about it, but that's why he called the fight, just too many head blows. Uh, thank you, Jess. You can see the swelling. You saw that cut there above the bridge of the nose. That started in the second round, and early in the fight, they, wanted, they were concerned about his breathing. And then later it was the headshots. Yeah, yeah. I'd say a good, a good stoppage. We're going to take a break when we come back. We'll get the official time of this stoppage. This is Golden Boy Live on Fox Sports 1. After the fights on Fox Sports Live, we go back.